Good morning, church. Grace and peace to you from our God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm delighted to be with you again this morning, and I'm humbled to stand here to bring God's word on Mother's Day. Humbled because many of you have more experience through your journey of pain. Yeah, anxiety, sacrifices, fears, as well as joys, as, uh, and blessing as mothers. And there's a story. Yeah, a teacher taught a lesson on magnet. Okay, and she was teaching and teaching English and then t- teaching about magnet. And then they were teaching to a primary three children. She thought that magnet does and what the magnet does and, and gave some illustration on it. The next day, she gave the children a written test. One of the questions she asked was, my full name has six letters. The first one is M. I pick up things. What am I? So when the test papers were collected and marked, the teacher was surprised to find that almost 50% of the students of this primary school children answered the question with the word mother. I'm sure there are many things mother pick up at home when their children are growing, learning and playing new things. These are part of growing up. And as an Asian family, my mother used the rotan to make sure things are kept and picked up tidy. Okay, it doesn't mean my mother is a fierce. I love my mother and my mother loves me. It just that it's picking up the things. Being a mother is more than all that she did for the children. Giving birth does not make someone a mother. A mother, as a pastor described, is a person who is willing to take on the responsibility of investing her life into another human being without expectation of anything in return. So whether you are new mother, an empty nester, or a mother-to-be, whether you have nat- uh, a natural children, a biological children, or ch- spiritual, or both, you have an influential role in the kingdom of God. And I wish all mothers, as well as spiritual mothers who are walking alongside and mothering younger person in the church or in your family, a blessed Mother's Day. And this morning message is a Mother's Day message. And I wanted to say that these biblical principles are applicable, applicable to us all. So whether mothers or fathers, sisters or brothers, daughters or sons, aunties or uncles, grandfathers or grandmothers, yeah, it's also applicable to our own life. So don't fall asleep, yeah? So make sure you pay attention, okay? Every Christian mother is a praying mother. And let us learn from Hannah's. I uh, pronounce the word at Hana, okay? Hena is American pronunciation. Whether it is Hena or Hana, it's still the same person, okay? The name means uh, find, show favor, okay? It doesn't matter, right? So I'll pronounce it as Hana, right? Um, so ha- le- want to see, the, learn from Hana's life what is to be a praying mother. Let us pray together. Every part of scripture is God breathed and useful one way or another showing us truth, exposing our rebelliousness, correcting our mistakes, training us to live God's way. Through the word, we are put together and shaped up for the task God has for us. So, Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. We ask for the spirit of the living God come as we open our hearts and minds to you. In Jesus' name, amen. The book of First Samuel has been a game changer for the whole nation of Israel. <coughs> the book begins in the days of Judges and describes Israel's transition from a theocracy to a monarchy. During the transition, the nation of Israel is torn apart by a lack of leadership and persistent rebelliousness 
of the people. We can read that in the last verse of the book of Judges, okay, in, in verse 25 of chapter 21, it says, in those days, Israel has no king. <coughs> Excuse me. Everyone did as he saw fit. Remember this verse, right? Very common and popular verse, telling us the heart, the heart of, of Israelite people. Okay, and it also reminded us of ourselves. Yeah? We do things on our own, and we see it free, we just do it on our own. So in that, in that line, the nation of Israel was frequently oppressed by the neighboring countries. A judge was approved by God to set free the people, but it only lasted as long as this judge is alive. So many of the judges had their own problems. They are not perfect. They have their own flaw. You know that Samson was a judge at the time, and he has his own flaw. And because of that, each time it went down, and there was a great spiritual decay. There was a great spiritual uh, downfall, corruption. When we come to 1 Samuel, we are introduced to Hannah, a mother who birthed not only a prophet, but also a nation. There are three distinguished characteristics of a praying mother from this, <coughs> from this uh, chapter. Sorry, I can't do it. The first characteristic A praying mother faces real life challenges. <coughs> Hannah is like us. Ordinary person. Thank you so much. Hannah is like us, ordinary person. So Hannah is not like spiritual person, wow, hero, a celebrity. He's like one of us. I'll do our daily chores, a wife, okay, and has a husband. But he faces many problems in the personal and family lives. We do have problems. <coughs> yes, Hannah has many. Thank you, Stephen. So sorry. It just said, thank you very much. The first thing, the first real life challenges that Hannah faces is personal problem. And her problem is that she has she's she was barren. In the olden days, the wife's main role was to provide children. It must be very painful for Hannah to face as she could not do so. Barren means she cannot bear children, cannot give birth to a child. To the common people, a barren woman at that time was considered a curse. And when we read the Bible, when you hear the Bible just now, the phrase The phrase, and the Lord closed her womb. <coughs> and the Lord closed her womb is mentioned two times. And to emphasize the problem and the source of her problem. Scripture tells us that Hannah's barrenness came from the Lord. This is one of the most difficult lessons we will ever learn. How can the Lord do like that? Isn't it when we hear this phrase says that, and the Lord closed her wombs. All situations we are in are given to us. If not, he knows and allows them by him and he approves it. We don't really want to believe that. It is hard to understand. But perhaps, you know, Hannah was struggling her barrenness within her. Asking the question, is it a curse? Or is it God's doing? Okay, that was a ding dong, ding dong. I believe that if, if you are in the position, or if I'm in the position, I was also ding dong here. God's a, a curse. So she's very troubled by all this. <coughs> and many of us may have the same thought, warring inside our minds. And when we face this kind of challenges, whose voice is right? Whose voice do we follow? What happened is that we rather blame it everything to Satan, everything on Satan, or on someone else, maybe it's my husband, or maybe you know, that kind of thing. But it's God who allows very clear, <coughs> the Bible didn't say any, uh, try to sweep it under the carpet, 
But it's God who allows good things and also bad things to come into our lives. God is in charge, in control. And we want to look into the words okay, regarding this barrenness. God's gift, kana barrenness. Job chapter 2 verse 10 says, Shall we accept God from God? Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? We, knew, we know that I, Job, Job was going through a lot of problems, isn't it? And you wouldn't like to be in Job's situation. He has lost everything, even his health. So when the wife rebuked him, he said this, knowing that all knowing God knows what's happening. And that's from Job. And from Ecclesiastes 7, speaks accurately. When times are good, be happy. And when times are bad, consider this. God has made the one as well as the other. And this tells us that God is in control. It doesn't mean when it's a bad thing, time, oh, your God is putting out. Eh, not, my, not my one, eh? not my doing. Eh? God is not like that. Good, bad, God knows what's happening. He allows it to happen. So that's Hannah barrenness. And so next, the second real challenge in Hannah's life is the relationship. No, in, is that her relationship, his, her, her husband married a second wife. Having more than one wife was not God's original intention for marriage. During that time, many young men were, young men were killed in battle. Polygamy, having more than one wife, became an accepted way of supporting women. If not, they would remain unmarried and, become, and became very vulnerable. Nevertheless, having more than one wife caused serious family squabbles, as we can see that in Elkanah's family and how Hannah suffered. Not being able to give her husband an heir could be the reason for Elkanah to marry a second wife. This is a double blow, a real painful challenge in her life. This will be true to us well, as well. Who want to share her husband with in another woman? Maybe we can, <clears throat> maybe we may not have this problem, relationship problems with the husband. Maybe in our lives we have relationship problem with our siblings, with our, with other people, okay, or even in laws, okay, in the family or outside of the family. <clears throat> so this is Hannah's challenge, second life challenge. <clears throat> Do you have that at home? I have that. I'm sure all of us would have that. Yes, there are some, fa there are family problems. There's no perfect family because there's no perfect man. And because there's no perfect man, there's no perfect family. So the third real challenges in life, in Hannah's life, is, is the external factor. You know, it is, as if it's not enough double trouble, okay? She was barren, and the husband married a second wife. Hannah was being looked down and humiliated by the second wife, Penina. And when you read the scriptures just now, it is obviously like a Chinese drama. You watch Chinese drama where the second wife will look down. No, it normally it's the first wife, right? Look down on the second down and really going to persecute. <laughs> but this one is the other way around. Okay. And let's find out what's the reason. And we can see in verse 6 and 7, describe the real, the real, real penina. Okay. And verse 6 tells us, And because the Lord had closed her womb, her rival kept provoking her in order to irritate her. When you read this, okay, when you read the Bible, don't pass by so fast. Read every word, especially in Old Testament. Okay. So you say, the rival, that means that they are not in a good term. Maybe Hannah wants to be good term, but this lady, the other lady, the second wife, will not want to be good term. It's just on the chucho and make sure that she suffer, provoke her in order to irritate. And verse 7 uses the same word, provoke. This went on year and after year. Whenever Hannah went up to the house of the Lord, her rival provoked her till she wept and would not eat. 
the word provoked, two times coming. It literally means to cause her thunder. <laughs> when the person thunder means, what, what, what do you mean? When I read this, the thunder means, uh, ah, ruling the hair, ah, like <laughs> thunder, right? So, so, so it is it's intentional. God's people intentional to do good things to others. But this lady, this Penina, the second wife of Alkana, has the sheer evil purpose Lee made her rival, made uh, 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 <coughs> Hannah jealous, angry, and depressed also. And give her, really can pull her hair out, right? And this what, and then the other word is irritate her. She provoked her in order to irritate her. Have you done this? Before you become a Christian, you do that. Huh? But when you become a Christian, huh, you have to watch out if you do that. Huh? It's not from the Lord, irritate people, provoke to irritate. So this penina provoke her to irritate. Irritate here means refers to being stirred up inwardly. Makes you very angry. So not only pulling hair, when pulling hair inside, start from the inside, right? You were very, very angry, stir up. Okay. So this is the word that say, and then and the uh, verse says year after year. When you hear the word year after year, like like not cannot stop leh. Like, Wow, this provoke irritation, all this cannot stop. Lah. How long can you, how long will it last? How long? Right? So year after year, okay, reveals that Penina did this every year. It is each time they went to, 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 to the Shiloh to do sacrifices and to worship God. Okay? Every year, and it indicates that she did that persistently and intentionally. Toksama in Cantonese, right? Very toksama. How to live with a person who is very toxic. Toxima. How can you say toxic, right? Is it true? Very toxic. There are people like that, you know. Even some Christians there. Eh? Even some Christians are very toxic because they say Christian by name, but their heart's still the same. Uh, so there's no change, no transformation in their life. They just want the name, but their heart don't want to change. You know? If a physician diagnoses Hannah's problem, Hannah's symptom of continued weeping okay, and poor appetite, it will be clinically depressed. Today, when you hear the word depressed, it's very scary. Eh? You know whether can get uh, depressed, but it's clinically depressed. Okay. So this is the, the situation that uh, uh, Hannah is facing. And maybe some of you are in the middle of challenges in your, in your life right now. Because of at home, a certain person cannot get along with, and to really, you know, you, you, you want to be a good Christian, you want to follow what God wants to forgive, want to, to live and love the person, but the person still, you know, still coming at you, uh, still to talk you until you really irritate and provoke, I uh, want to give it one tight slap, uh, let's stop it, but you never do that. The more you sh at the tight slap, the more you will retaliate. There are people like that. The more you sh shout at them, the sh louder they will say. They will talk and school you. So this type of way will not help. Right? So some of you may be going through that. You know, Hannah recognized her pain and grief and turned to God. And this point reveals to us that it does not mean that because we are praying Christians, we will not face any challenges of life. In God, challenges in life are obstacles on earth that God has allowed so that we overcome them with God becoming stronger and loving Him more and more. So it's good to have obstacles, okay? obstacles in life. And that's where we learn to look up to God. That's where we learn how to pray to God for wisdom, how to respond. Do I have to respond or do I have to react? Response, you take a longer time, you need a lot of patience. React, it will be like Hannah. React, you can give one tight slap, or you'll be like a, a, a Absalom, just kill the person. And there's many people sought out to the wrong way, sinful way to solve the problem, to get rid of the person. Right? So, but God allows it to happen, it's how we respond. And how did Hannah respond? That's what we need to learn. It's not easy, isn't it? Do you, do, you, do you get it? Is it easy to live with people like that? 
no, I can see some of you may not, maybe a very fine family, maybe uh, good <laughs> family, don't have problems. <laughs> uh, but I'm sure there is, it may not be at home, it may be in the work or place, it may be the family, it may be your extended family, right? There's sure to be something. But how do you solve? How did Hannah solve? Hannah recognized her pain. Okay. Hannah chose to turn to the Lord in prayer, in spite of going through real painful challenges in her life, real painful injustice. Okay. It's no right. But she turned it to prayer. And this brings me to the second characteristic of praying mother. A praying mother recognize her emotional pain. A praying mother recognize her emotional pain. From verses 9 to 16, records Hannah's expression of a deep anguish to the Lord and to the priest. Beside requesting for a son for herself, okay, she did not deny what she feels. She did not suppress. She did not pass by her painful emotion and keep on doing, doing things to cover up, but recognize and identify her emotional pains. She acknowledges them as follows. And I'll just show it, right? And these are the emotional pain that Hannah gone through. Bitterness of soul. Okay? Hannah wept much and prayed to the Lord. In verse 10, bitterness of soul. A fool. Wait, whole fool. Bitter, pahit. Your life is pahit. La. How can you smile? How can you be a li- uh, to, be a, to live as a Christian? Full of heat, la. bitterness of soul, and wept. And then verse 11 told us that um, she, uh, when she prayed, uh, she told God, uh, she prayed. And when she, she knew that all this again, she went to the Lord and she prayed. And when she went to the Lord, she didn't cover up. God just helped me. You know? But she expressed in this way. She expressed, Oh Lord Almighty, if you will only look upon your servant misery. Wow. Misery. Something that is so, no pro, no, cannot be cured. That so terrible, lah, misery. Okay. It's the same, quest, the same word that's used when Israelites were under the bondage of e- Egypt. Okay, and they were cried out. They were cried out. And the Lord hear and see their misery. Very terrible. That means like bondage, stronghold. Today the songs a lot of right words using strongholds. Uh, there are a lot of strongholds that make you pull you down. Okay? So Hannah when talked to God like that. Misery. And then as she kept on praying, Eli observed her mouth, okay? And she when she speak, she prayed. Okay. And Hannah was praying with her heart and her lips were moving, moving, but her voice was so was, was not heard. Okay. And and when 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 Eli and when Eli saw her like that, she thought how the thinking she was drunk. And Hannah, Hannah has to explain. And this is what she explained. Okay, I wrote down different version of Bible to tell her how that that kind of anguish in her heart. Uh, it's not just my mind, you can know. It's so terrible, can cause depression. Can cause a person who can go cuckoo if you are having this kind of depression, okay? So the, it's from NIV, it says, I am a woman who is deeply troubled. Okay, this is the one that you expressed to, to who? To the priest. Okay, I'm here praying and I'm talking to God. I'm deeply troubled. And then in, in ESV, say, I am a woman troubled in spirit. And then in NKJV, say, I'm a woman of sorrowful spirit. I'm a woman with despairing spirit. I'm an unhappy woman. And all this, when you read this, I don't know how you feel, but when I read this, I feel like crying. My heart is, is like, oh, full of anguish. And many times in our modern, modern era, we skip all this because we have a lot of things to occupy our minds, to shut down our emotion. So much so, we do not know whether this emotion is good or no good. Emotions, you know, and we are very quickly shut down. That's why I'd like to show to you this how 
a person who is depressed. How a person has gone through difficulty, the relationship problem can have that. And then in verse 15, the same verse, the last, the last part of it says that, and then he and told the priest, a live priest, okay, I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. When you read this kind of scripture, you have to slow down. Huh? You cannot read like, duh, 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 okay, like, I have read already. Like, you didn't catch how people feel. And God see the hearts. If you don't see hearts, what God sees hearts, how do you going to see your own heart and help to see others' heart? How are you going to minister to people? When people come to church with long face and sad, how are you going to recognize? So he, he, she said, I was pouring out my soul. When I checked, other version, there's no other, same thing, pouring out my soul, pouring out my soul, pouring out my soul. And I'll tell you, I just want to illustrate something. Pouring out my soul. Can you see? Okay. This is my simple way, okay, this is uh, the bucket, lah, huh? to receive, huh? okay, it represents God receiving, lah. just represent only, lah. Okay, this represents our soul, our heart. Lah. It's represent, lah. it's not that, like that. Lah. Represent our heart. And inside is very painful. Very, a lot of things that Hannah has, a lot of things that you all gone through, all the pain, all the, all the terrible things that people have said to you, uh, persecute you, all the things, maybe somebody, had, you have keeping it, keeping it, keeping it, and you have no one to turn to, and you're scared if you talk to somebody, uh, you bring shame to the family. Maybe, maybe Hannah, Hannah is like that, yeah? If I tell to others, the whole community will know about my husband. The whole community will know about my family. And keep, 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 I'm just so full, okay? And there are a lot of painful experiences, painful words inside. I cannot grieve, forget what she say, huh? Like that kind of thing, you know? And I'll name all these things inside here. And then when she, Hannah turned to the Lord, and I turned to the Lord, and when, when this insensitive priest uh, huh, say, uh, you, uh, you are drunk, uh, wow, this also keep inside. Uh, <laughs> you don't say, keep inside. What you, but you, when you read the Bible, uh, Hannah didn't feel like that, no. But, it's only, but she, maybe she didn't say it, but inside here she said, right? So uh, she said, I come here, I come here because uh, I'm very troubled and I'm pouring out my soul. That's why I say when you read the scripture, don't skip and do fast forward, man. Pouring out my soul to who? Pouring out. You don't pour, you don't pour, you get depressed. It come out in other, other ways, you know. You may get sick. Psychologically say that. Huh? You may get sick. Huh? You will feel, harbor all the anger, unforgiveness. Okay? But Hannah is very wise. He trusts God. So he pour, pour. So all the dirty things come out and pour, pour. Okay? I don't know how long it, it, it may take, okay? So many things. Got some more. Pouring. And when I check the commentator, uh, commentary, uh, it's the same word pouring the Holy Spirit you know, and the X. You know the X? When God pours the Spirit, it's not trickle, trickle, no, tick, 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 no, pour unto the people. It's the same word they use of pour. So when we are, when we are really down, when it's okay, it's normal when we're upset, nah. it's not that, yo, this must be a cheese scene, not depressed, no, no, no. When we are upset, when we are painful, we, we tend to keep. But it is not healthy to keep. We are emotional beings, we are made to have emotional beings. So we, we, if we don't pour, Okay, Hannah will not have the baby if she doesn't pour. She will not have the full of joy. She can't hear because the, all the burden, all the things that she has block out to hear what God would speak to her, what she can do to her. No joy. And when you read this, after she poured out, you know what happened? She was able to eat. You see that now? Many people, I don't know whether you, you have to examine your life, okay? Many people come to church, huh? I don't know how they come to church, leh. They come to church, a lot of problem now. Nah. It's true, isn't it? A lot of burden now, nah. you come to church, I don't know. 
a lot of burden. Maybe you didn't pour leh. Hannah, after pouring eh, he, she, she, she was right. She was able to eat. Maybe many of us has been harboring, have a lot of things in the soul leh. Eh, didn't pour out the, all the things in the soul leh eh, because we don't talk to God. We say prayer only for pastor. We pray only on Sunday, only when we read this one, this prayer, written prayer, we pray. But when you read the written prayer, you don't pray with the mind. You have to learn you pray from the heart. You mean every word you say, or else it's not prayer. You are just speaking words. And I want to quote, okay. Our next one, I want to quote what this guy says. Before I come back, huh? Uh, his, his name is actually, who is that guy? Hey, why can't I? Oh, sorry. Take the wrong one. <laughs> sorry. So excited already. Mm, John Bunyan. When I read this, I said, wow, this John Bunyan. What it says there? In prayer, it is better to have a heart, what is that? Without words, than words without a heart. Are you like that? When you pray just now, only words, uh, the heart, uh, don't, don't touch. Something is wrong, I tell you. You have to wake up. Whether you are young or old, you have to wake up. When we pray the prayer, forgive me uh, if I sound like scolding you. Uh, because if you don't wake up, the church won't wake up. If you don't wake up, there's no revival. If you pray the prayer, just the words without the heart, you miss it, Lord. God looks at the heart. You pray, God can't hear your prayer, Lord. You get what I mean? When it's not from the heart, God can't hear. It's not that God is deaf because you didn't say. It's not because God do not know your prayer. Many people say that God knows my problem. La, and then you don't turn to prayer. God knows my problem. La. This is a lie. It's a truth that God knows our prayer, but it's a lie the way you respond. You don't pray. When you know God know your everything, evermore you ask the Lord. Lord, I agree with you. You know everything, now I talk to you. Isn't it? Don't assume don't take God for granted. God desire the relationship, desire the fellowship, and we miss it. So when you do the prayer written there or any written prayer, you have to check through and read, read from the heart. Revival not comes only from empty words. Tell me when your children tell you empty words, what would you do? When you are a teacher, the children come to you with empty words, what would you do? Empty words, that means no meaning lah. No, 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 not, not serious or nah. You know, what will you do? You say, oh, quite zai, quite zai, very good. You do that? So this John Mayan says, in prayer, it's better to have hearts without words than words without a heart. So my friend, don't quickly push away that emotion. And this lady didn't push away, okay? And when this, the troubles and the shames, don't push away. Ask the Lord to look into that. So I want to tell you that it's like Hannah, it is okay. It's okay to cry. It's okay to express our emotion. It's okay when it's grieving, we cry. It is okay you feel sad. It is okay I miss my mommy. It's okay you get angry, but do not sin. So that's why pouring out is very important. Talk to God. So praying is not from our head with words. It is our soul, our heart, right? And then, because of that, okay, Bynum says what? Those who lead God's people need spiritual sensitivity so they can rejoice with those who rejoice and weep and those who weep. This one, uh, tak jadi, you know. It didn't come through because your first part cannot. 
if your first part la, that means your first part means uh, if you don't pray to God in your own quiet time in your own personal time uh, if you don't have that relationship uh, to pray from your heart la, you cannot hear because you cannot hear as I say again you cannot minister to people who are broken who are sick in spiritual life so we cannot minister and people just pass by every people all students come by pass by we cannot minister because we ourselves are so broken when we are broken people we don't like people to cry don't stop people from crying when they grieve when i was in one of the church when one of the leaders wife somebody i think the mother or father passed away she was crying and one of the leaders said don't cry Christian is so hard. Christian is not hard. It's the men who do not know Christian who do not know Christ. Cry and allow them to cry. Sit beside them. Let them cry. Don't need to say so much. We do cry. We do feel sad. We have emotion. Because we are made to be emotional being. We are physical being. We are spiritual being. We are also emotional being. Sometimes we learn too much, okay? That we our mind is so full of things, full of information that we forget that we are emotional being. Friends, remember, okay? Today is the Mother's Day. Mother's Day, mothers is also emotional being. Okay, so you are also emotional being. So get in touch with your emotion. How ask the Lord? Show and recognize. Try to recognize why are you angry? Why are you so rejected? Feel so rejected. Why are you so down? Ask the Lord to show you. Him. Okay. So a praying mother recognize her emotion and bring them to the Lord. Okay. When you know, you bring them to the Lord. Third characteristic of a praying mother. A praying mother has healthy vertical and horizontal relationships. Do you know how Hannah could go through the distressing time in her life? Many people may find other ways to go through life on earth. There are many ways. Nowadays, there are super, super many ways. When you have anything wrong, you can go to see a doctor. It's not that I don't believe in doctors. I can see a doctor, can see a psychiatrist. It's not nothing wrong, okay? It's nothing wrong to see them. But we have many, many ways to help people to, 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 to not to suffer so much emotionally or what. Hannah was not merely going through life on earth, but she was fulfilling part of God's eternal plan for her, for the nation of Israel and for the salvation of the world. The person Hannah whom we are studying now is not just a mere mother in a small village. But do you know that there's a great purpose God has? Because of her, she birthed a prophet, not only a prophet, she birthed a nation, Israel. Without, without Samuel, the Samuel is the son, no one, a, a prophet need to anoint a king. Samuel was the one who anointed the first king, Saul. She has, correct, she has connected herself to the right relationship. The vertical relationship with the Almighty God. The royal relationship made possible through the covenant made between God and Abraham and Moses. Hannah exhibits a close relationship with God by trusting him in constant prayer, pouring out all her anguish and pain of her soul to the Lord, keeping her promise to give her son to God and rejoicing and worshipping him. So it is part of the great plan of God because through there, Israel, okay, and that's where Jesus came from, that nation. The line, the lineage is there. Okay. Now today, this relationship with God is still available, but it's made possible through the new covenant. Made by the perfect man who came from heaven to earth and said, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This is my cup that is poured out for you. The, the new covenant in my, uh, for you is the new covenant in my blood. And you hear this every month, right? Not? And you know that you are a part of the big plan 
of God. You may not be like Samuel, wow, big, big, no need. Whatever God, each one of you do, there is certain part God has given you. And this church is here is not because, okay, just because some of the founder members like to do. They're here, they're inspired by the Holy Spirit. This must be something that the Lord is doing. And when it comes to this church, it is not that only these leaders. You, each one of you have a part in the bigger plan of God, in the salvation plan of God. You know that or not? Hannah didn't know that. Hannah didn't have the p- a privilege for you to sit down and tell, oh, do, 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 all this is given you, no need. Because she has just that relationship with God. When you hear her prayer in chapter 2, you say, wow, this is like a theologian who, say, who knows God personally, you know that or not? When you read, it seems like Mary. Mary is a poor, sh- a small town girl. You say like, Hyung Ha Lo Ya. A small kampung kampung girl like that. But when you hear her prayer, wow. You know the God, the one who created God. You know the God who exalt those who are humble and those who are proud. Tiu, go down. And the everlasting God, when you read it, pray, see. So, my friend, just continue to listen. Get right with God. Get right with God. So this relationship, vertical relationship, is very important. And this relationship, vertical, okay. And now the horizontal relationship is with others. It's a reflection of a relationship with the Almighty God. If you do not love your neighbor, the reflection shows that you do not know God. You do not love God. Very simple. You tell me you love God, you show me how you love others. That's very simple. That's what God says. Right? It is because of a right relationship and understanding of who God is and His purpose in the... F- she finds peace even with the enemy. She didn't create problems for the family by disputing with Penina or even her husband. I will run away. Or quarrel, I quarrel. I mean... Maybe the, 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 the whole thing we do not know how la okay. Maybe she, she will keep a lot of himself. I believe she keeps looking at the word pouring the word pour it tells me uh, she keep a lot. She kept a lot, right? And then and then she has a right to do so to really give them properly, but she chose not to, but go to the Lord. When the priest was insensitive, okay, and accused her, she'd be drunk. She plainly explained to her, my soul is troubled. The last verse of chapter 1 tells us that she talked to the insensitive priest. So it doesn't mean, ah, yeah, this priest, ah, ah, yo, going to accuse me drunk. How can I like that? Man? He's a priest who so knows, should understand me more. You know, if this thing happened in today's world, ah, what happened? Ah? Zao Long, don't want to be in the church already, yeah. I think many people will be offended and stop going to church and stop their children to the same church if the pastor says like that, hey, you're drunk, ah. isn't it? You may say, that time no other churches, ma. now the churches can go anywhere. Ma. That's why a lot of people are poor Christian, poor disciples of Jesus Christ because they don't hear why am I debut, why, how to help, how to pray. Okay? Very poor discipleship. I'm not saying that when you, 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 you can't live, you can't, if God tells you to live, you live. Lah. Calling for you to do a missionary, you go, lah, right? Lah. But you go because ah, yeah, this pastor, no good, no good, no good. But if the pastor teaches the wrong thing, then of course you live, lah, teach all the, the, all the, the, the wrong things, ah, ah, the, the not wrong teaching, fake teaching, false teaching, ah, then, then there's something you have to live. But if the pastor is not, because pastor is not perfect. If like that, like, a lot of people go around everywhere. Like, I'm going to this church, this church, everywhere, isn't it? And going around like Mary go around in Kuala Lumpur. There must be something God wants us to do. And you look at Hannah. Hannah, Hannah. Even though this priest like that, he sent us to the son. It doesn't mean the son didn't grow up. He's still used by God. He's still used by God. Because Hannah is still praying for him. Each time going to visit him. You know, it's not that, oh, yo, okay, go to him. No. He hears a lot and continues to be faithful 
to raise him up. So my friend, I will tell you this one, this number three, this is the last part of my, my, my sermon. Praying, okay, um, praying mother has healthy vertical and horizontal relationships is the key foundation of your life, Christian life. Without number three, you cannot have number one and two. You cannot go through life. It's a key foundation. If you do not know God, you cannot pray. You do not have a healthy relationship with God. You are Christian, but you don't pray. Because healthy relationship means you know God, and in times of trouble, you pray to him. You repent. Uh, you, you, you have close relationship. So this is a very foundational, okay, in, uh, to have relationship with God. And to be a praying mother without having a relationship with God is very difficult. Of course, today, you can go in other people's sources, other sources. Okay? But what does God want to teach us? Hannah learned, leaned on to God and his promises. She looked into God for answer and unto someone on earth to pray with. Okay? We don't totally say only for God, lah. no human being. You see Hannah, he also asked the priest to pray. We need someone on earth. We need to identify with somebody on earth. We not just only have God, I am everything with God, with God, yes, God, and also these two vertical and horizontal. We have somebody to identify with. And that's why we in church, you need to pray. And there must be somebody whose body we can pray together with you. When you have a problem, besides talking to God, you can talk to God. That's Hannah says, I'm my soul with trouble. Have you ever told somebody, my soul is troubled? I'm so anguished. I'm so troubled. Have you told somebody like that? If you haven't, no, that means something is wrong. It's our relationship. You know that. No? You don't keep yourself. That's not healthy. And the community cannot grow. And this is an, and she looked out to God for answer and unto someone on earth to pray with. This is an, an amazing praying mother who not lean only on God but also have healthy relationship with others. A praying mother faces real life challenges. We cannot escape. A praying mother recognizes her emotional pain and brings them to God. A praying mother has horizontal and vertical relationship. Let us pray. Father, we thank you and praise you. For giving us mothers. Thank you for the example of Hannah. An amazing woman. Who suffered so much emotionally. Who suffered so much with the relationship but yet you will use her. Father, we are here today and we pray, Father, that you will come, continue to show us and lead us. And even as the mothers are here today, we thank you for their life and won't you come and lead them to renew their, their love for you today as they come to hear about Hannah and that their prayer life can also be alive again. We pray, O oh Father, that this church prayer life will be alive because, Lord God, you have a purpose in each one of us here and also for the purpose of this church. Thank you, O oh Lord. We bless your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.